let's get Al in here. So Al is a Samvi ambassador, of course. He's a Mazzani artist. He is a salon owner of Embellish Salon in Chicago. And he is a long history of hairdressing in his family. Many, many of his family members also being stylists and salon owners. And he's a tech expert who's passionate about bringing out the natural beauty of all different wave patterns. And today we get to see him in full effect, bringing so much education. Please, in the comments, welcome Mr. Al Campbell. What's up, Al? How are you, my friend? I'm great. How are you, Andrew? I'm doing so good. We are so excited to have you. And I know you have just a ton of education to share with us, how to, you know, really work some with some great hair. So I'm going to jump off and let you get started. But you know me, I'll be back in to ask some questions too. Perfect. Thank you so much. I always appreciate your support. So, hey, everybody, like Andrew said, I'm Al Campbell. I'm from Chicago. And so, you know, Chicago is a super diverse city. It's like people from everywhere, some parts of it is even considered a melting pot. So we deal with so many different types of people, so many different types of clients. And with that being said, we deal with so many different types of texture. So I wanted to say one thing is that we know that 65% of the world as of today has textured hair and it's expected to grow within the next two years to about 85 percent so just knowing that i feel like texture education has been huge and on a rise lately and i'm super thankful for that and i'm super thankful to be able to share this information with you today so we're going to be talking about the sam via silk press i know a lot of people always ask like what's a silk press what's a blowout what's the difference so i'll go a little bit over that first and then we'll kind of dive into some other important information so a blowout is usually, well, first things first, from hairdresser world, they're kind of the same thing, kind of. So you use a blow dryer, you use a brush, not really crazy science behind that, right? The only thing that kind of changes up is like the end aesthetic and some of the ways that you approach the blowout. So the difference between a silk press and a blowout is specifically a silk press is usually something flatter. You kind of go in with a paddle brush, very similar to the flat wrap, but it's more so geared towards textured hair because you do have to relax the curl out of the hair, not with a permanent relaxer, but we are smoothing that curl out of the hair and usually going like with a flatter surface on the curvature of the head. Now, when you think about a blowout, you're usually using a brown brush. You want to add in some body, some volume, cool beans. When it comes over to a silk press, you can still have movement and body and volume, but nine times out of 10, you're really smoothing that strand out. And that's usually on higher texture types, which makes it easier when you use a paddle brush because it is better for detangling. So I wanna just kind of dive right in with some important information. So let's go from start to finish. I'm gonna pull a couple of my models over. This is Jessica who we'll be working with today. And this is her cousin, Erica, who we'll also be working with today. So down in the comments, let me see you say hey to Jessica and hey to her cousin, okay? So first things first, let's kind of go over some texture types. Who down in the comments can tell me, like, what are some things that make up a texture type? I know sometimes we're like, the curl, how many times it spirals, um how straight it is, is it wavy, is it curly? Those things are super duper important, but there are other characteristics that we wanna pay attention to when we go into a silk press, much like we do when we think about color and other things. So when it comes to textured hair, to keep it balanced, it needs a balance of protein and moisture. That's how we keep it healthy, I'm sorry. So to keep it healthy, it needs a balance of both protein and moisture. So nine times out of 10, when you deal with higher texture types, moisture is gonna be your key benefit for endless result, a flawless end result with anything that you do. So things that you wanna pay attention to is porosity for sure. You wanna make sure you know the porosity of your client's hair. It's not just about how curly her hair is or how wavy it is. Yeah, that's important, but the porosity is going to be a huge part of that. Also, the consistency of her hair strand is going to be a huge part of that. And we'll kind of dive into those things later, but make sure you pay attention. So type down in the comment box, porosity and consistency. I want you to remember those things and I don't want you to ever let them go, okay? So 
walking into the salon, we have a client who comes in and she's like, hey, I want a silk press. She has really big, curly, beautiful hair. We're super excited to dive in. Some of the first things that you want to talk about at the chair is proper detangling and products. What is she using at home? What's happening? You know, is she wearing her hair curly most of the time? Does she style her hair with heat? And a lot of times heat damage is a huge concern for clients who have curly hair and they want to go straight. You can straighten their hair temporarily without heat damage. I do it all the time. About 85% of my clientele get silk presses. They're style shifters, so they get everything. But silk pressing is like the number one service in the textured hair salon right now. So I'm super excited to share that with you all, too. So let's kind of go back to the chair. We're at the chair and we're starting out with our Mazzani 25 Miracle Milk and we're detangling that hair. Usually, um, you don't want to go back to the shampoo bowl and just start wetting the hair down. You want to kind of build a moisture base and kind of create some slip into the hair, kind of get those curls that are wrapped around each other and some of that hair that shed it out because it's out to here and I've just been wearing my hair big and curly and I'm on day like three or four, right? We know the hair sheds every single day, so we kind of have to detangle and get that shedded hair out before we go to the shampoo bowl and like wet it down. So the Miracle Milk is going to give you enough slip to be able to detangle the curls, but it's not going to wet the hair down so much that it fully reverts. Because if we go back to the shampoo bowl and really wet that hair down, it's literally going to shrivel up. You know, it's going to go back to where it naturally lives. So it's called reversion. So when it starts to revert, now we have all that shedded hair trapped in along with our nice, beautiful curls. So we want to deflect that and kind of get that hair detangled and get that shedded hair out at the chair first and then we go back to the shampoo bowl now let's dive in at the shampoo bowl something that is super important for me in the salon i literally clarify every single client that comes in i don't care who she is where she's been i clarify every single person because you never know what people are using on their hair curly girls really like to use a lot of products and a lot of oils so to set yourself up for success you want to make sure that you get that hair strand clean so everybody type down in the comments, clarify first, okay? Always clarify first. And what that's going to do is create a clean palette, one, so that you can have nice, soft, flowy hair, but two, it's going to give you a clean base so that when you do go in to instill moisture, the hair is receptive. So if clients are using oil all over the hair strand, it's kind of like, you know, it's the old science way, oil and water does not mix. So if you got oil coated on this hair strand and you try to come in with water and moisturizing shampoo, it's like, ah, eh, the hair strand really isn't getting any benefit from that, right? So we want to make sure we clarify with that. And I like to use my Mazzani Gentle Clarifying Shampoo. It has a charcoal-based cleanser. And the charcoal cleansers in it targets artificial oils and keeps the natural oils in the hair strand. So if you know anything about a texture guest, you know she's always concerned about her hair being dry and she's always afraid of sulfates because she thinks it'll strip her hair. So Mazzani's amazing technology in this shampoo has created a way to target artificial oils and debris and kind of keep that luster from the natural oils. Now, there are some cases where it's just too much. And you really do need to strip the strand. So you might want to go in with something stronger, uh, something that will really get that hair strand clean and create a clean palette. And that is where I like to go in with my Reckon Hair Cleansing Cream. This is one of my favorites. Um, so between these two clarifiers, I kind of choose based on the buildup. So if I have moderate buildup, my everyday clients, my natural girls who kind of know what they're doing and they keep the hair pretty clean, I go in with my gentle clarifying shampoo from Mazzani. But when I have a more intense case, I do go in with my Reckon Hair Cleansing Cream clarifying shampoo. Okay, so clarify first. I hope every I hope that wasn't too much because I know that was a lot of information, but we always clarify first to create that that um, that clean base for us. Then I like to go in with my Mazzani moisture. I'm sorry, this is the Thermosmooth shampoo and conditioner. 
my absolute fave. So this is the system that is built around silk pressing, that is built around blowouts. Because it has that C3 complex, so the cationic polymers and um, the coconut oils and the ceramides in it is what's gonna help us nourish and smooth that hair strand down. It's gonna keep that cuticle sealed so that we can fight humidity, so that we can fight reversion, all those good things that makes a good silk press last. And it's gonna give us style longevity over time. Because usually when people straighten their hair, Textured hair guests usually shampoo their hair like every 10 to 14 days. So to make sure we get good style longevity through that time, we want to use products that are going to help us and set us up for success. So shampoo and condition with that. Now let's kind of talk about porosity here. So if I have a client who has high porosity, I know her strand is like, ooh, it's open, right? It's extremely open. Her cuticles are lifted up. Nine times out of 10, she's probably color treated. But when you do get into higher texture types like texture type seven and texture type eight, when you get like coils and things of that nature, it's less of a cuticle layer there. So it tends to be open. So those clients can tend to have high porosity as well as color treated clients. So in those cases, you wanna make sure that you kind of like go in with something strengthening sometimes too. So sometimes you may have to add in a treatment with your silk press to cater to the texture type. So Thermosmooth is our base shampoo and conditioner to set us up for a successful silk press. However, treatments can be instilled throughout this process to make sure that we get good end results. So with that being said, high porosity, we wanna make sure that we go in with something strengthening and we really wanna work on trying to seal and lock in that strength and moisture, okay? Balance medium porosity she's great she's the ideal client she can receive moisture and she can hold it so using thermosmooth on her is like perfectly fine now our low porosity clients her hair is really resistant that cuticle is compact and sealed down so we usually infuse her conditioner with some type of heat so whether it be under a hooded dryer with a processing cap or under steam or steam at the bowl whatever you decide whatever you do do in your salon, you want to use heat to kind of open that cuticle up so that it can be receptive to the conditioner and the moisture. Now, why is moisture so important to curly hair? Hmm. Who can tell me in the chat box why moisture is so important to curly hair? Like, I feel like we've been talking about this all year long. Let me see what you all have to say down there, and then I'll spill out some information really quick. So what I found throughout working with textured hair, like for the past, maybe, I feel like I've been going crazy with textured hair like the past nine years, like really high into texture. I found that moisture is super important because textured hair has a deficiency of moisture. So with that being said, we know curlier hair has less of a cuticle layer, so it doesn't retain moisture as well. So we have to infuse that hair strand with moisture, and that's usually how we get it to behave and cooperate and stay detangled and to really get it to perform at its best ability. So putting moisture into that strand not only sets us up for success with behavior, but it also sets us up for success when we think about humidity resistance. So usually curly girls straighten their hair, and if they step outside, if they go into any, like you can have a sprinkle of humidity and they start to swell, right? That's the hair reverting. So what's happening is the hair strand is dry and it's sucking moisture from the environment and it's taking it back to its natural state. So when you think of hair strands, think about a sponge, right? If I have a sponge and I'm cleaning my countertop, if I've already cleaned most of my countertop and it's filled with water, my sponge can't really pick up more water, right? So we wanna fill that hair strand with moisture to make sure that it's not depending on the environment to pull moisture and now our client is outside swelling when she's at brunch on a Sunday, right? So those are some key important features why moisture is super important during the silk press and why moisture is super important to texture hair, okay? So we've gone through our shampoos, conditioner. We clarified first. We went in with our thermosmooth shampoo and conditioner. We may have infused it with some heat because you can use thermosmooth as a deep condition. So we may have infused it with some heat, cool beans. We're going to go back in again with our 25 Miracle Milk. 
as our leave-in, and this is going to create a moisture base for us. It's going to help us balance out that porosity. It's going to be heat protection for our blow dry. It's going to detangle. It has nine moisturizing benefits and nine strengthening benefits. And it's also going to create a palette for us as a binder for our products. So it's basically like kind of really the prep step that's super important. So every client that you see who has textured hair, I recommend this leave-in for sure. Now, let's get into like the juicy stuff. Let's get our hands into some hair. Enough talking, Al. Let's get our hands into some hair. So first things first, let's talk about sectioning. So we've shampooed, we've conditioned, we've gone in with our Miracle Milk. Sectioning is super typical to most blowouts. I feel like it's about eight sections. We usually have two down here in the nape three across the back so we can create seamless lines and go with the curvature of the head. And usually in the front, I have like triangular partings. Not sure if you can see that, but yeah, I usually do triangular partings to make sure I have a nice flow. So how I dictate these partings in the front is usually based on where my client is gonna part her hair. So if she's like, I'm gonna part my hair on the left side, I'll make this be my definite part. If she's going to part her hair on the right side, this will be my definite part. And if she's going to part her hair in the center, I would just break this section into two. So that's our section, two in the nape, three across the back. And this parting is like ear to ear. Two, three, three. Okay. Now let's go in and just kind of get our hands in, dive in a little bit. So <laughs> she's pretty much prepped and mostly done. Um, I prepped her last night, just kind of wanted to be prepared because <laughs> these lives are like an hour and I'm always nervous. Like, are we going to get everything in an hour? Like, is everything going to happen? So we just want to make sure we're always set up for successful prep. Now, I left one section out and we're going to work on a blow dry here. And we're going to also straighten. So I'm going to come in a little bit closer just so you can kind of see her texture. So as you can see, she's about a texture type six, really curly. And then the ends are like really kind of frayed and dry a little bit. So that's going to happen. Those ends are very porous. And we all know this. It doesn't matter whether it's textured hair, whether it's straight hair. The ends are porous, why? Who could tell me down in the chat box why the ends are usually more porous? Okay, so we have our section here. She's gonna, this is her definite part on this side of her head. I'm just gonna center a little bit. So here's her definite part, right? I'm gonna go in with my 25 Miracle Milk, really work it into those ends because that's where I really need the moisture and then spray up on the strand, okay? Take my paddle brush, work that in. All righty, and now we're ready to go in with our smoothing product. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I have two choices that I use. Typically, if I'm dealing with somebody who has a higher texture type or I'm dealing with somebody who needs moisture, I'll tend to go in with my Thermosmooth Sleep Guard. It's a lotion kind of consistency. It really moisturizes the hair strand. It has a heat protection up to 447 degrees, and it really helps us to seal that cuticle and it's light. And what I love most about it is you don't need a lot. The product is very, very concentrated, so a little bit goes a long way. But I'll give you a... Now, this is a this is a bonus tip because this isn't even in Mazzani's education. We haven't talked about this with Sam Via's education yet. So this is truly a bonus tip. So I'm going to throw this out there just based on my hairstylist experience. The new heat screen that Mazzani just launched recently is amazing for clients who are um, finer and clients who have lower texture types who really don't need a lot of um because when you think about it you don't really want to weigh them down with the cream all the time now can you manipulate the cream yes like i said a little bit goes a long way i usually start with like a dot and i build from there because you don't want to go in with too much product because you can put more in but you cannot take product out you'll be back at the shampoo bowl starting over from scratch so heat screen is super beneficial and it helps a lot um, with finer hair and lower texture types so that you're not weighing the hair strand down. So keep that in mind, type in heat screen down in the comments and I want everybody to try this out because it's absolutely amazing. 
It has a rose water base and it smells super good. Um, and it protects the hair up to 450 degrees as well. I'm just going in with a little more Miracle Milk because I feel like my ends are starting to dry out. And Miracle Milk is so light, you can literally use as much of it as you want and nothing will happen. It's going to literally penetrate that hair strand. So I'm going to take about a pea size of my sleek guard, which is literally about this much. So you can, oh, that's a bad finger. <laughs> so just about a pea size um, this will be enough for that section, trust me. And I always work it into my fingertips. I know some people kind of like spread hair products all throughout their palms, but I don't, we don't really use our palms much. So working it into your fingertips just to kind of give you some good distribution because those fingers can get through the hair strand. And I'm starting at the ends and working my way up to the base. And it's super important that you kind of pat that product in on the base. Now, you don't want to weigh the base down because you may want to add some volume in at the end, but you do want product at the base so that you have consistency throughout your smoothing. Now, if I have tons of product here and zero product here, and then maybe a little bit of product here and absolutely nothing in my zone one, you're setting yourself up for failure. You want those smoothing benefits right at the base because typically if clients sweat or they get hot or something like that, that's usually where they start to swell first, like right in the root area. So zone one is just as important as the mid strand and end, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna work this in with my paddle brush. And notice that I'm going in and I'm working all of my products in and I'm detangling. At Mazzani, we have a saying, it's ABD, and that's always be detangling throughout the entire process. You're working down this hair strand and letting that hair, hair strand work with you and not against you. So if I'm going in and back combing and brushing back, I'm kind of like really reverting those curls. And the goal is to stretch them out here. So I'm going to always be detangling. So type ABD down in the comment box. All right. So now this is my favorite part because I get to go in with some of my favorite tools. I'm using the Sambia Pro Dryer. I feel like this is a super light dryer. Um, one, it helps me ergonomically because I've been doing blow dries for a very long time. So it's lightweight and consistency has helped me so much throughout the process with like, you know, arthritis and, you know, your wrist going crazy. And another thing that I want to point out is the nozzle on this blow dryer. So as you can see, this is a super sleek nozzle. It comes with a wider one too, but this is the super sleek nozzle. And this is going to be very important when you do silk pressing because that skinny nozzle really concentrates the heat and gives you a focus. And what happens is when you're thinking about smoothing down that, because you're doing two things at once here, right? Not only are you smoothing down the cuticle, but you're also removing this curl from the hair temporarily. So having a good concentrator that's going to really direct the heat the way that you need it to, it's going to be like, that's what's going to set you up for success. So type down a good concentrator in the comments, because when you have them too wide or too bulky, they can kind of blow the hair all over the place and the hair is starting to dry, you don't really have as much control and you're creating frizz along the way. So when you have that sleek nozzle, you have more control. Another thing that I love about this dryer is that it's not extremely like powerfully hot. Like you really wanna protect those curls. And we talked about heat damage earlier. Clients are always worried about heat damage. So yeah, you can go in and use all the heat protection that you want. And yeah, you can go in and make sure the hair strand is clean, but you still wanna have good tools that back you up and support you with manageability, with getting the job done, but that's not abusing the hair strand and abusing and frying out the cuticle. So heat damage is like one thing that I love because that I love to talk about because people just get very carried away with the blow dryer. They get extremely carried away and they feel like if it's not hot, it's a not. So no, it needs to be hot, but it also needs to be controlled. So that's one thing I do love about this dryer. My other favorite thing that I'm gonna be using here is my Sam Via tail comb. You're gonna see why this is super important because of its fine teeth. I'll give you a heads up on that. It's because of its fine teeth. So type fine teeth down in the comments and then we'll kind of dive in and talk about that a little later. But let's get into some blow drying. So I have my section here. It's prepped and it's ready. Tension is super important. 
Type in the comments, tension and heat must meet. If you don't have good tension, you're not gonna smooth this hair strand out. It's gonna start to dry in its natural state. And then guess what? You're gonna be trying to do so much work with the flat iron and that is going to kill you. The blow dry is the most important part of a silk press, honestly, because it should literally be straight after the blow dry, okay? So when I go in and blow dry, I like to use my thumb and place it under my brush. So I'm gonna take her off and turn her around so you can see that. So when I go in and grab my section, you can see my thumb is right at the bottom supporting the base of the brush, and that's how I'm gonna keep good tension. All brushes don't give you good tension. I'm not gonna say like, oh, you need to have this type of brush, you need to have that type of brush. You can use whatever you like, whatever you have, but there are some tools that you can do with your body that supports you when you need tension. So I've learned that placing my thumb right under that paddle brush to get that base smooth helps a lot. So you'll go in at the base on all four sides, smooth out zone one, then you work on zone two, and then you go into zone three. When you're in zone one, you want to kind of do like a smoothing move. It's kind of like a tack. You know what I mean? You do not want to burn your client. She has a lot of curly hair, and I know we're trying to get it dry, and it may not dry as fast based on her density. Um, so we want to make sure she's comfortable. So kind of just like tap down at that base. Don't really like sit it there and like concentrate going slow like you would at the mid strand and end. You kind of got to move in and out at that base because we don't want to overheat the scalp. So as you can see, we got a question, Andrew. Yes, sir. Um, so question about the section size, because a lot of people are like, well, you know, that's a big section. Do you not usually subsection into smaller pieces? And so I guess kind of two questions. Um, do you prefer to kind of take that larger section? And then two, just I, I kind of observed you kind of came in from different angles and moved it in different directions. So you, um, can you share a little bit about that with us? Of course, so section size is definitely based on the client's density. <clears throat> how much hair she has and how much control. We all know, <clears throat> excuse me. We all know way back from in beauty school that sectioning is for control. So I'm dealing with a, a mannequin who doesn't have a lot of hair. If I felt like she had way more hair, could I break this down into smaller sections? Yes. Is this typically my sectioning in the salon? Yes, my paddle brush is pretty wide so I can kind of control a lot of hair. And this is usually like my money area. So I like to keep it together and I don't like to create any partings because I want it to kind of flow smoothly. So it's up to you. If you feel like you need more control and you need to make smaller sections by any means, go in. You have to work with what you feel comfortable with. However, once you kind of know the rules, you break them and you kind of flow and you get used to it and you'll start to gather more control over time. Now, we wanted to talk about going around all sections, just like we would in a traditional blow dry. You want to make sure you get all four sides of the base of that section dry, because if I just focus on the top, I might have some hair that's damp under here. It could really fool me. And then all four sides also gives you the ability to kind of penetrate that heat through the entire section and it dries the center without you having to subsection. So if I'm penetrating heat here, it's flowing through. When I'm penetrating heat here, it's flowing through. When I go in from the back end, it's flowing through. And then when I go under, it's flowing through too. So just as I said before we started, you wanna hit all four sides of this section. 
And as you can see, the base is like super smooth and ready for styling. Now we can work on that mid strand and end. One thing, when I work on the mid strand, you don't really have to go under as much because you've got that base dry. That air will flow through. You'll start to feel the hair kind of moving like this and you'll feel the air going through. So you don't have to go under as much. Before we smooth out the ends like crazy, I want to point out one thing. You'll notice that you don't need as much tension as you work through the mid strands and ends because you can rely on the tension from the brush and the dryer to kind of smooth out the mid strands and end. You really need a lot of tension down at the base because you cannot concentrate that heat up here like you can down here because we talked about that discomfort for the client. So tension is super duper important, but we can kind of rely on the tension from the brush. And you'll notice I'm doing like that scoop in motion because it's giving me more tension to kind of smooth out those curls and I don't have to necessarily hold the brush at the bottom anymore when I get down the hair strand where I'm starting to lose length, okay? And is your, are you using high heat, high air airflow on the blow, blow dryer? I definitely am using high heat, high airflow for sure. Now we know when we have clients who have finer hair, they may not need as much heat, but the high heat is definitely gonna help us lay that cuticle down for sure, especially when you're dealing with clients who have a rougher consistency. So we talked a little bit about consistency earlier. Consistency is super important because it's gonna let you know how that outer layer feels. Some people have consistency like silk, some people have consistency like satin, some people have like denim, some people have like wool. So rougher consistencies, which they're all beautiful by the way, <laughs> rougher consistencies, you definitely wanna make sure you put a little bit more elbow grease into it when you try to lay that cuticle down, okay? So tension is gonna be really good and higher heat is gonna be your friend in laying that cuticle down. Alrighty, so she is pretty much smooth and ready to go. Now, once we go in with the iron, the dirty work is done. I wanted to go over a couple of other things with the blow dry before I go into the iron work. So you kind of notice, like I was doing this scoop motion and my dryer was really close. I want to point out the dryer should be close, but you should never smash it into the brush. You do not want the heat to be that direct on the hair strand. I know if, we deal with, if we're dealing with rougher consistencies, sometimes it can be a little intimidating or sometimes it may seem like it's not smoothing out, but really be patient and take your time working down the hair strand. Don't force it, don't try to get it to dry faster and please don't smash the dryer into the brush. And then you'll notice like at the ends, we kind of flip that brush over and we started to use like kind of like a round brushing type of motion to create that bevel to fall with the curvature of the head and 
with her face shape. That's super important. And that, and last thing, the last thing is we were kind of doing like a directional blow dry as this all was happening. So I don't think I said that before, but you always want to blow dry exactly where you want the hair to lay. We know that from any traditional blow dry, but that's super important when you think about a silk press because it is flatter and it is usually sleeker and smoother to the head. So you definitely want to go in and make sure you do a directional blow dry and blow dry that hair exactly where you want it to lay. If I was focusing most of my blow dry coming back this way, that could work. If I was trying to create something off the face and give like more volume, that could definitely work. But I knew I wanted something sleek and kind of like framing the face like this, kind of over the eye a little bit, like really beveled around the chin. So that's why I focus my blow dry that way. So hey, Al, I'm, I'm curious just because, uh, you know, we're in teaching mode, of course. So this is, you know, going to take, you know, an hour for a, for a class on this. But how long does this overall process usually take you just at salon speed? Traditionally, it's about two hours in the salon. So okay. that's hard to finish from detangle at the consultation to finishing. Gotcha. Beautiful. Thank you. So one thing really, really quick as we go in for our iron work, small sections are key. So type down in the comments, small sections, small sections, small sections, small sections. Now, with this hair being really, really curly, when we started, we know that we're smoothing it out. We're changing the texture. We're changing the, the physical makeup of how it looks. So if I were to take a bigger section, I could have like dents. I could have inconsistency. You want to make sure that you leave no strand behind. So taking smaller sections, which would be about a quarter inch section, typically is also based on density as well. We know with finer texture types, we can kind of go in, you know, we don't need to isolate as much, but with higher densities, we definitely want to make sure we take smaller sections so that we get smoother consistency. The heat is also penetrating, activating that product and it's sealing that cuticle. So if I have too big a section and the heat hasn't concentrated all the way through, I have portions of my section that aren't technically smooth. It's just been pancaked between two smooth sections and the center is like, more prone to reversion for sure. So smaller sections is key. Alrighty, and I'm using my Sam Dia Sleeker and I love this iron because the name does not lie. Um, it's super sleek, it's one inch and it gets in very close to the base. Just like we said that base was super important when we blow dry, it's super important when we flat iron too. So having a good sleek one inch iron that can get close to the base without burning our client is super important. Ceramic plates are super important as well because they get hot, but they're not as harsh as like titanium or things like that. So we're always in concern with heat damage, right? Ceramic really helps us with smoothing the cuticle down and penetrating heat without frying the hair strand. So um, one other thing that I want to point out about the sleeker that I absolutely love and I'm going to move on because I don't want us to lose time here is the settings. You'll notice that like the settings don't say like 200 degrees, 350 degrees, 420 degrees. Now, of course, in the owner manual, in the owner's manual, it does tell you what the temperatures are, but I love that it plays it off of texture types and, you know, client situations. So we have low, which we know we would use on like finer textures, you know, people who have thinner hair, like, you know, then we have color treated, which is usually our more fragile strands. So when we talked about higher porosity and color treated clients back at the bowl and they need strength, they also don't need their hair to be fried out either. So we have a setting here that kind of sets you up for success with that. And then you have high, of course. So it kind of just makes it a lot easier. I don't really have to do the math. I can kind of look at my client, see what she has going on and prompt the setting right to that. So when I go in with my iron, notice I'm using my Sam via tail comb. We talked about this earlier. We, we said fine teeth. Type in fine teeth down in the comments for me again, and then we'll talk about that as we process this flat iron through. When I go in at my base, I'm going to smooth maybe like twice at my base. This base has to be smooth. We talked about it earlier. If a client sweats or she walks out into humidity and gets hot, What's the first area that's going to revert first? Down in the comments. Let's see if you remember. The base for sure. So once I hit my base, remember, I'm smoothing out textured hair that's naturally curly. And whatever I put inside of this iron is one of what's going to come out. It's almost like lightener. 
When you go in and do your balayage, what you see is what you'll get. And it's the same way with putting texture hair through an iron. What you see is what you get. So if I still have some waves or, you know, some frizz down here, some movement down in the strand, if I put that through the iron, it's just going to come out like a flattened wave because it literally is a flat iron, okay? So I like to tuck my comb in right under that first section that we smoothed out in zone one and put my iron right behind it. And as you can see, they're lined up right next to each other. And this is called a comb chase. So I'm literally chasing the comb with my flat iron. So type comb chase down in the comments. And as you can see, I'm gonna put this behind my shirt because my shirt is lighter. As you can see, wait, there we go, <laughs> there we go. This section is super smooth, super sleek and ready to roll. Now, what you'll note is that sometimes when you're styling or straightening textured hair, you'll have to go in and smooth the hair out first and then you can go back in and do some restyling. Thank God you went in with good heat protection products because you know it's okay to use the iron twice to work in. Once you kind of get used to it, you can kind of go in and do some styling in the beginning. But say for instance, you have a new client, her ends are pretty bad, she hasn't had a haircut in a very long time. You wanna go in and smooth this hair out completely straight and then you may go back in later and add your bevel or add your beach waves. And it's a little different with textured hair because textured hair kind of has its own built-in hold. So of course it won't be as, as good of a hold if you went straight from the blow dry, but you will get some hold in there, of course, supported by products. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that, too. When you are going in for silk pressing and you decide to say, for instance, your client is like, hey, I really like curls. I really like waves. Once you've gotten her hair in a good state, you can go straight in and kind of add your wave right from the blow dry. Like you don't have to smooth it out first. Like I said, once you kind of know the rules, you get to break them. And if you straighten or I'm sorry, curl or wave that hair right from the blow dry, you'll tend to get more hold, more style longevity. And um, you can you can get tighter curls. We all know once we kind of straighten hair out and we go back in and curl it, it's kind of lax. So, yeah, it's the same thing with this. But you do tend to get a little bit more hold that second time around with textured hair versus straighter hair. Ali, I've noticed a couple of comments asking about multi-texture hair where, you know, you have different textures on different parts of the head. Any tips for working with that? Most definitely. So when you and most people do, most people have two to three different texture types on the hair strand and you want to treat those areas accordingly. So if I have it's no one cookie cut answer. So that's the that's the great thing about texture. It's always challenging us and it's always keeping us on our toes. So if I have somebody who has like a lower texture type and smoother consistency in the back, I might turn my heat down a little bit. If I have somebody who has a high density and higher texture type and rougher consistency in the center, I may go in with, you know, um, <clears throat> I may go in with my um, heat a little bit higher. Also with products, when you think about porosity and you think about different texture types, different hair needs different things. And if you have different hair on one head, you need to treat it that way. So if I, I could go in with like a lighter product under the nape because she's a little bit looser and that's a smoother consistency and doesn't really need a lot of product. And she might be, usually the center is tighter. It's where we need more moisture. It's usually the most neglected area. So I'm definitely going to go in on the center with what I feel like it really needs to be catered with. But yes, you would treat each section when you're doing that consultation, when you're spraying that hair down at the beginning with that Miracle Milk, and you're kind of starting to see how that curl reverts. Also at the bowl, when you're seeing that curl and you're understanding the porosity, you're going to address each section literally like you see it, okay? Okay. That's that automatic shut off. So you don't burn your house down. It definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it on literally since I started. So do we have any other questions down there, Andrew? No, I think you're doing great. Um, the one question that did come up right in the very beginning that I wanted to ask you, is there a difference between silk press versus just a blowout? 
So we talked about that a little bit earlier. Remember, we kind of said like technically there's no difference, but when you come to the market, you have to kind of know what market you're speaking to. So a textured hair guest is usually going to refer to it as a silk press versus somebody who has straighter hair. They're probably going to refer to it as a blowout. And that's just based on like what area you live in, what dynamic you're in, what the audience kind of calls it. Usually textured clients who get their hair smoothed out is going to call it a silk press. Now we talk about the difference between like tools. Some Most of the time when you do a silk press, you're probably going to just do like a flat paddle brush, very similar to flat wrapping. Um, but when you do a blowout, nine times out of 10, people refer that to, you know, a round brush for something with more body volume and movement. Gotcha. And then just as you're kind of going through your ironing here too, the, there was a question that came up about doing this on shorter hair. Yes, most definitely you can do this on shorter hair. <clears throat> now, what I do tend to notice about shorter hair is that you really have to be cautious when you go in with the blow dryer because the hair is a lot closer to the scalp, so it can really burn the client. Um, but so being super cautious with heat, with the blow dry, and then also you might want to change up your tools. So of course, if you're using a paddle brush, you want something that's going to smooth you out, but it's not as wide because you, you have shorter hair, less to deal with. So you want something that can tuck into those tight places and really give you some tension. And you also make, you won't be able to support that tension with your thumb. So nine times out of 10, when you have a lot, like somebody with a lot shorter hair, you'll go in with like your nine row Denman brush or something like that, because you can create tension and get a little bit more pull, drag, and tension so you can smooth that out. So shorter hair, I would definitely go in with a smaller tool for sure. And you can also, um, RCMV around brushes, they are super good for like getting in tight spaces, like the smaller round brushes are really good for getting in tight places, like at the nape, and you can literally just like roll that round brush down and kind of just like, so say for instance, we're working in the nape, I wish I had my round brush out with me now. But if I was working in the nape, I could literally roll that round brush down, get the tension against the head and just follow with my blow dryer, very similar to my comb chase, and just kind of chase that brush. And that'll smooth out those hairs down at the nape. So yeah, it's a lot of different options, but shorter hair clients can definitely smooth their hair out as well. All right, and I'm finishing up my section here and we're gonna go in for some ending bevels. And I think we'll wrap right after that. If we have any more questions, feel free to drop them down. Um, I wanna share my Instagram. Make sure you're following Sam Via first and foremost. It's always a ton of free education. Um, I literally am glued to the tube every week. It's always something going on every day. I'm super excited to be a part of Mannequin Mondays. Um, my name is Al Alexander on Instagram, so make sure you follow me. And of course, make sure you follow at Mazzani on Instagram if you always want to know information about new products, how to use them. It's a bunch of Mazzani artists there. You might find somebody in your area who can, um, you know, aid and assist, as well as Sam Via Ambassadors, too. We're super open. Make sure you're contacting us. We respond to DMs. So even after this, if you feel like you have questions, or you need to contact me, feel free to DM me at any time. I will definitely respond. So as I'm kind of going through and finishing up my bevel here now, so she's good and smooth. Like this is a, this is traditionally a silk press. So she can kind of like tuck behind her ear, do whatever, do whatever. But I'm gonna kind of bevel this a little bit to really hug the head shape. And so when I go in with my bevel, I don't need to go in with as much detail now. I'm just doing some finishing iron work, just like I would in any other situation. So I can take bigger sections because I've already done my smoothing. Everything is already out of the way. Um, so I just take like bigger sections and just kind of let that iron naturally bevel itself. I'm not really tucking too much because <laughs> back in like the 80s and 90s, people used to call it a bump. Have you ever heard of that? Like, oh, can you bump my hair? Like that a bump is like a really tight bevel. So we don't want to bump the hair. We want it to have like a natural fall with the head shape. So I'm just kind of going in and giving the natural bevel there. I remember and, when I when I used to uh, teach in the schools, I we wouldn't we would do this technique where you'd lift the hair real tight off the scalp and you just gently kind of touch the base a little bit and then like kind of pull it down around the iron and we would call it bumping the base. And 
then there was a, a song that came out like a couple of years later that was something about bumping the bass. <laughs> <laughs> I was it's like, hey, thing. it's our theme song. <laughs> it's a real thing, right? I, I'm, that bump is serious. Like that's a bold bump. And I don't think people are really interested in bold bumps anymore. So yeah, you just go in and kind of give some iron work at the ends. And this is also giving you that opportunity to finish up anything, polish it off. If you have flyaways or something like that, or you feel like you lack shine, you can go in with Mazzani Shine Extend, give it some gloss, kind of help with that humidity resistance a little bit as well. You can also go over with a little bit of light holding spray to kind of help to control flyaways if you feel like you have them. I tend to like put a little bit of holding spray on my fingertips and just kind of like brush down at the parts because I don't want to technically spray holding spray right over this because I'm not trying to lock it in place. Regardless of how light the holding spray is, sometimes it can just give a little too much hold and take some of the flow out of what we've worked on. And we want the hair to naturally move and blow. Like even though this is a mannequin, you want the hair to like literally blow in the wind. It should be super light. So holding sprays can be your friend with flyaways, but yeah. We know it can get crunchy if we go too far. So take a little bit, just kind of tap it into the tips of your fingers and kind of just like lay it down. Or you can spray it into your comb and kind of just like graze over some of the flyaways that way too. Love that. Those are great tips. I know that a big part of, you know, getting this intense of a blowout, I mean, this is a, you know, an investment in a process. So I know a huge priority to that client is longevity. So how do we get the most longevity out of a style like this? So most definitely you want to prep your clients on how to tie her hair up at night. So traditionally, if she has it just straight, she can do a traditional flat wrap, which would be, you know, of course, like we did back in beauty school. We just comb it all down, start in the center, work our way around and create that flat wrap. And it's going to give us right off of our part, right where we were. And when she brushes this hair down, it's still going to have that bevel. It's still going to fall to the curvature of her head. Now, if you have something with more curls, <clears throat> excuse me, something with more curls or more movement, if her hair is longer, she can kind of pull it up, create like a little bun pineapple and tie a scarf around it. And then in the morning, she can kind of shake that out. She can also do pin curls. So just like a traditional pin curl, just take her section roll it up, pin curl it right to the head and tie a scarf on it. Super duper important, which I think I should start selling these with my retail products is satin scarves. We wanna use satin scarves because like we talked about earlier, textured hair is very prone to dryness and it has a moisture deficiency, so to speak. So satin and silk scarves are not as absorbent as like cotton scarves and things like that. So you have to have a scarf because you have to keep this hair in place, right? So if she doesn't have a sleek scarf on, the hair can move around, and now it's kind of disturbing everything we did while she's sleeping, right? So we want to use something that's going to hold the hair in place, keep it flat and sleek. Also, your clients who work out, this is a huge one. It's super important for her to kind of tie her hair up just as flat as she can. So I would say doing that round flat wrap, keep it flat, tie your scarf on top, keep the hair in place and do not take that scarf off until the hair is dry. So if you have to kind of hit it with a blow dryer while it's in its shape, you want it to stay smoothed out until it's dry because we know if it's damp in any way shape, it's going to come right back out and revert. So satin scarves are a must. I, people are wearing a lot of bonnets these days, but I still like to go with the satin scarf because it's sleeker, it's flatter to the head, and it really holds the hair in place so you don't get a lot of disturbing while you're sleeping. So that's a, that's a huge one. That's awesome. that's awesome. Love it. Man, so many great takeaways today. I mean, just even something as simple as with that triangular section up on the top, you know, coming at that from the four different directions. Because I know for me, you know, I was always taught like, okay, little tiny sections, little tiny sections. But, and my main concern was the one that you addressed, which is, well, is there stuff kind of down at the scalp in the middle that aren't, isn't getting touched? But the way that you explain that to come in from the top, then from the side, then from underneath, um, I, I just love that. I want to play with that because it's just a different approach and I want to play with that some. So um, that was a huge takeaway for me. One other thing that I think I might have slipped up on was 
we're, we're let's talk about like when we have really, really high texture types. And I, I want to end with this because we know really high texture types can tend to be a little tangled. So we work through that base a little bit um, and got that smooth. We had the good tension there. And sometimes those ends will be like really frizzy and start to puff up because the air is still flowing. So it's starting to dry anyway. Sure. Now, you can go back in with your paddle brush and kind of smooth out those ends a little bit, detangle those ends, working your way up, and then follow through mid-strand to end. So you're not like, what do I do? It's a bunch of frizz at the bottom. Like, oh my gosh. So you can go back, skip the mid-strand, go in with the ends, smooth those ends out a little bit, and then work your way and travel through the full section. So nice. I wanted to make sure I left you all with that too, because Different texture types call for different techniques, different products, different body positions. Like you just kind of got to know what's in front of you and how to approach it. Absolutely. And I think that's so key. I'll like we have to be willing to play with these different things. And oh, well, yeah, I said to start at the base. Well, try it where you start at the ends and see what happens, because that's the fun of hair. You know, sometimes we have, like you said, you know, break the rule or learn the rules so that way you can start to bend them and break them. Yeah, I wish I could break some of the rules with COVID because life has been really boring. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> soon enough, soon enough. We're on our way. Al, thank you so very much. This was brilliant content. I mean, you packed so much information into this hour. It's just incredible. So remember, guys, you can always come back and rewatch all of this great content because I know there's probably a ton of stuff you can revisit and relearn from Al. And, you know, as he said, please go and follow him. And, yeah, and, you know, especially as a Sam B ambassador, he is always welcome or always open to uh, hearing from you guys. So please reach out to him. Most definitely. Thank you so much, Andrew. And thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate your energy, your comments, your questions. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Al.